This time on the show, the Wi-Fi Pineapple gets a major man-in-the-middle revamp. Backtrack VMs, data recovery, credit card validation, and checksums. All that and more, this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. This is, of course, your weekly dose of techno lust. And it's delicious. It is a delicious. You know where I went this weekend? Where'd you go? I went to San Diego. Oh, how was that? It was pretty good. Yeah, just went down for a couple of days to visit family, but I enjoyed it. It was nice to get away for a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm back working hard on the Hack You're back Shop. back on, on day number 63. Happy day 63. Oh yes, it's 11, 11, 11. Happy Veterans yeah. Day. When we're uh, recording this is also for you Hex fans out there, day 0x3F. Oh man, I forgot to tweet at 11, 11, 11 at 11, 11 a.m. at 11, 11 in the seconds. Oh yeah, well that's, that'll happen at p.m. So there you go, because oh, who right. uses 24 hour time? But yeah, military time. I know, Paul. Paul out back there. It's like the, that and the rest of the international audience. You know. But you know, that <laughs> Everybody aside. Else. <laughs> yeah. US is just like this weird, strange little ball of deliciousness. Did we, did we get any gifts? We did, actually. Okay. We got a box of gifts. Yeah? I'm um, like, I'm getting excited for every A block it's because... It's kind of heavy. Uh-oh. This it's is... eight pounds. It says on the yeah. label. This is a gift from... Uh-huh. It's a little dusty. Jonathan. He says, I'm a huge fan. I've learned a lot. I especially like the hack tips. I work for a industrial printing equipment repair shop. One mm -hmm. of the technicians was recently fired and he was a bit of a hoarder. When he left, we filled two Gaylords with a dead or couplet useless old junk. For example, you saved about 10, 10 kilobytes per second nicks in this box of CPUs. Why would you keep a 10 kilobit a second nick? I don't know. And also, <laughs> these are so old. Look at this Pentium 2. Well, the fun thing about these P2s here is that uh, much like your Nintendo cartridges, you get to go <laughs> and then yeah. put them in the computer and see if they'll play. Yeah. That was good times. Yeah. I still I, do that. I'm so, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad Not that we've moved on. away from sockets. Me too. Hooray for, what is it, socket A or socket 1? I'm telling remember. you, we need to take all this stuff and make some kind of art out We do, of it. we need to make triceratopses and Tyrannosaurus Rexes. Yeah, Yeah. out of computer parts. Snobsosaurus Rex! Right. Well, thanks so much, guys. As you know, 548 Market Street, you know the address. And uh, send us some goodies and we will build a Tyrannosaurus Rex out of your computer parts and things of that nature. Yes. Yes. Oh, you know how I've been playing with Ubuntu? Yeah? I've been, um, I found this game. It's it's free for download. It's over in the software center. Mm -hmm. It's called Pipewalker. Those are most things for Linux. <laughs> Does that sound familiar to you? Pipewalker? Pipe yeah. Uh, show me. Ooh, wait it's a second. It's basically con connecting your own I know this network. game. It's so cute. Okay, so I have, where, I have a game running got, right here. You've got like a computer network and you got to get all the nodes to connect to the server. Yes. Yeah? And do we have that all right. on the recorder? Yay. Yep. Nifty. Oh, oh see, you want to get this on the screen? it turns all Linux and stuff. That's cute. Yeah, so we have the little Linux penguin, the tux that appears on the computers when you get them connected. And when you finish it, oh. aww. And it goes, it's, it starts up the network and you get these little stars. It's so cute. And it's kind of an obsessive game. Like there's just like hundreds of puzzles. You know, I mean, honestly, yeah. how is that any different than managing an enterprise network? Right. Oh, look at this one. See how small it is? Oh my Whoa, God. No, thank you. Okay, I'm not at that <laughs> level yet. But anyway, it's, it's really fun. So if you haven't played it, just go over to the software center, download it. Yeah. yeah. It's good times. Cool. <laughs> Um, the only thing up with me is that uh, the uh, segment on CBS aired, so we'll have links right. in the show notes if you guys want to see that. They, yeah, of course, I saw took that. the two sound bites that I had that were the most dumbed down possible. I know. I said I know. a lot of I intelligent totally things, but it's CBS. I listened so. to it and I was like, wow, they're making people sound really scary. <laughs> and also stupid. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> I, I get it. It's like mainstream is always going to be like super dumbed down, and that's why they're I'm all, sitting like, there going like, you shouldn't connect to open networks because it's really dangerous. Like, yeah, yeah, I think, it, I I think like, their quote was something well, like, yeah. like, if you're connected to an untrusted network, don't trust it. I mean, like, <laughs> duh. But, you know, like, sometimes people need some clue bats. And that's true, anyway, yeah. That's why I love our long-form internet content stuff where we don't have to pander to live common and all I that agree. fun stuff. I agree, I agree. But, uh, yeah, it was fun to be able to show this off, though. 
um, with the, the, the news people and uh, have a lot of fun because uh, I was totally able to snipe her Twitter password and her Facebook password. That's and, awesome. And do you think she's changed them now? I will not go and find out because that would be an <laughs> unethical thing to do, but I'm Good sure you, she Darren. has. Good for you, Good for you. Yes. Good now, this guy. is all I've been working on for the last several weeks. You know that the show has been a little uh, odd and it's because since oh, yeah. DerbyCon, I've just been coding. We have been whew, and, uh, working hard. And I'm super, hard. super stoked about it because this is the episode where we get to, like, like 4X01 all over again yeah. years later. Yay. And it's the Mark III. I'm super happy and very proud of this because it basically took yeah. all of the, like, feedback over the years of the Wi-Fi Pineapple and put together something, like, super slick. Um, but I thought that I would just talk about this one fun hack that I learned well in development of it that was just, like, one of these. What? Oh, um, awesome. And it's okay. about this thing called NoHup. And if you're like a Linux, Unix, whatever programmer, you're probably familiar with this. It's basically, uh, it tells the system to ignore what's called a hang-up signal. And we've talked about this before in the past in the sense that like, I think we did a series or a segment on, uh, yeah, we did a segment on this awesome tool for Linux called Screen, where you're able to have basically like multiple bash tabs. Mm -hmm. And then when you log out, they're still running. And then you can like reconnect to the screen and things of that nature. Um, and the idea with this is no hop is just a command where you run no hop and then whatever you want to run, okay. then you can log out and it's still running in the background. I bring this up because one of the things that I've done with the Pineapple 3 is I put together a pretty cool BBS meets like consumer router nice. kind of interface where it's like pretty simple to start um, turning on and off different like services, all the man in the middle stuff built in. So if, like you want to start snarfing URLs and you click start, well it's all in PHP. And PHP is just telling it to like run a system command. Right. Yeah. So that's where NoHub came in. In that, like, with PHP, there's there's uh, system, shell exec, and exec, which are functions for like, you know, you tell the PHP script to actually execute something on that server. Except it'll sit there and wait until it's done. And no, putting an ampersand at the end of the command doesn't do it. So, um, and I didn't have NoHub on this guy, but a really fun, cool hack that I learned is that uh, the at command is used to schedule events. Mm -hmm. um, I know that at command's on Windows as well, actually, so I wonder if this would work with, uh, with that. But, I, but specifically on Linux, if you echo the command you want and pipe it into at now, it schedules the tasks to happen immediately. Oh, and then at okay. is actually running the command. So PHP sends that, and then it's like, my hands are done. It's all done. Yeah, and I yeah. can go back to whatever else I'm doing. And I don't know, I just thought that was just like the most bizarre, weird hang up that I had, uh, no pun intended with the no hop, uh, that <laughs> I, I was having with this thing and I thought I'd share that with you guys because I'm just like, out of all the crazy hacks you have to get some of this stuff working sometimes, and that was a really fun one. Yeah. And I'm sure now I'm gonna get emails like, oh, well you should have used no hop nice or some other <laughs> weird ways to do that. But, well, I'm uh, sure you will uh, try out all the different ways that you can do that. Well, that, that's the other fun thing is I'm, I'm not done with this. Let's just call it 1.0.1 of the Mark III right now, but the last function I added, I know it gets to be like feature creep, right? Shannon's like, she's like, yeah. finish it up already. I was like, <laughs> yeah, but I, I just want to add this one more feature. And it's like, all right, all right. I was like, when are we releasing yeah, 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 yeah. this? When one is it coming One more feature, out? one more feature. Are you done yet? <laughs> Fine, last feature was an update thing. So you can actually like, oh, okay. you know, so if I like improve upon it, I can like release a thing where you just copy and paste some stuff, and then boom, you're, you're nice. you know upgraded to the latest firmware. I guess you could say. Okay, yeah. that's cool. All right. I know. Well, now let's find out about the latest in weaponized wireless fruit. Mm. Delicious pineapples. <laughs> Man, it seems like just yesterday I was here at, well, a similar cafe in Williamsburg, Virginia, talking about the very first Wi-Fi pineapple. I guess in that case, though, it was actually inside a real piece of fruit. Um, and then on to, you know, the, the, the original, the, the Yazaga, you know, the, the karma on the fawn. Uh, and then later, uh, like in a plastic pineapple and the open mesh versions, the Mark II, and very excited now about the Mark III because this hardware is is a step better and the software, I just have had so much fun with it. So I figured that, you know, I'd come back here to the, uh, you know, the usual suspects, uh, the target rich environment, if you will, and uh, kind of do a demo of, you know, what it all is and what's new in it, kind of give you a uh, a uh, little look at what's under the hood and then talk about, you know, upcoming projects. Um, but you know, the more I think about it, the more I'm realizing I've done this before. 
How many times have we been at the cafe? We should probably just go get a beer. Does that sound good to you, Paul? Yeah, all right, let's, let's just, let's pack it up and go do that. That sounds like more fun. Hey, hey, Jason. Hey, Darren, how are you? I'm all right. Excellent. Thinking a boot of Oktoberfest would do the trick. A boot? A boot. So if you guys are new to the show or new to Yazaga in general, basically let me give you a brief overview. I know I've talked about it a lot in the past, but we do have some fun new stuff in the Mark III. So you know, let me just kind of like lay the groundwork. Essentially, what Yazaga is, is a modified wireless access point or wireless router that, um, that does something pretty unique. It implements Karma, and the way that that works is that uh, it replies to probe requests and lets them see what they want to see. So if you're familiar with like Harry Potter, it's like the uh, in the first movie how there was that mirror and whatever Harry looked at in the mirror, he saw what he wanted to see. This is that in wireless access point form. Um, and essentially what will happen is when we turn on the karma in Yazaga, it's going to be the yes man or the yes sayer. Actually, it's kind of apt that we're in a German bar because you know it is German for the yes man in that when your smartphone, when your tablet, when your laptop turns on, most of the case, most of the time with most uh, operating systems, what's been implemented is a feature for convenience, and as we know, convenience always trumps security, uh, where the device in question will automatically send out what are called probe requests saying, hey, is my home network around? Is my work network around? Any wireless access point that you've connected to that's open and remembered, it will try to automatically connect to. And this is the default state for so many devices. I can't tell you how many times in testing I've had Blackberries and iPhones and laptops and tablets and just you name it, devices connect to what they think is the free Wi-Fi at the airport, at the coffee shop, um, a lot of times like in-flight Wi-Fi, and it works very well on open networks, and that's kind of key because open networks are the public ones. I mean, obviously, you couldn't have a wireless network at the airport and be like, oh, you know, we're providing free Wi-Fi for the patrons at the airport. Here's the WPA key. It would, that wouldn't work. You know, what you typically find is it's an open access point, and then it'll be like a, um, you know, like a little splash page where, like, here's our terms of service, agree to these, and, and whatnot. So that is the Yazaga bit in a nutshell. And we're really stoked because it is such a powerful, just such a very, on a fundamental level, such a very powerful thing to just say yes, because it violates that inherent trust that the computer has, that, that the access point is who it says it is. And it's kind of crazy to think that, oh, the computer's just gonna trust this access point because it said it was. You know, there are so many aspects to what an access point is, more than just the SSID. But this just sees, hey, here's a request for this SSID. Yeah, sure, that's it. And I know that it gets really complex in like enterprise networks and whatnot to like kind of manage like, you know, all of the other aspects. But dude, seriously, there's way more to identify an access point than just that. There's the BSSID, there's the channels, there's all of these different elements that go into it. And yet none of those are parsed for security and for users' convenience and user friendliness, we just remember those and automatically connect so you don't have to type a password every time you boot up. What a pain in the ass that would be. So anyway, that's what we're doing. We're violating the inherent trust that uh, that, that has in, in just the Wi-Fi setup. And um, using this, we can become the man in the middle. And that's where all the fun stuff comes in. And that's where the Mark III really shines. Now, first and foremost, I have to give a big cheers and thanks to Robin Wood, of course, for all of his wonderful work with Yazaga, which this implements, uh, as well as Sebastian and Mubix for all their support in the development of the Mark III. Um, and I'm really excited because basically we've taken a look at like the way that the first two versions worked and some of the hangups that, that the, the biggest issues that people were having with it and the biggest like features that people wanted with it. And, and I think the biggest difference was that the first one was kind of considered like an access point running Yazaga. And this one now is kind of more considered like a router running Yazaga. And what I mean by that is before it was all like passing through and you would have your DHCP server and all of your tools 
on the laptop that you're hosting your uh, pineapple with, which is, you know, great, but if, say, you want to, you know, battery power, leave it somewhere and do all your evil bidding that way, it wasn't as easy. And there were configurations to do it that way, but it just wasn't easy. And that's really what I've gone through here is trying to do, rewriting the web interface and just making everything simple. So what we've done is the DHCP server now lives on the device itself. And so the clients, they connect, they get an IP address from the pineapple and you don't need to think about how that interfaces with your laptop anymore. Um, and the tools, not all of the tools, but some of our favorite man in the middle tools, the DSNF suite, uh, NGREP, the Aircrack NG suite, things of that nature, have then moved over to the pineapple so that you can do that stuff. And then to make it really easy, I've rewritten the web interface so that all of those services, just like before with the Ajaxy web interface, same idea. Uh, I've kind of gone in a different direction. I've, to be honest, what I've done here is I've got inspired by your standard Soho routers, uh, as well as my old bulletin board system days, and come up with a uh, a interface that's I'm I'm pretty proud of. Uh, the idea here is across the top, you've got your you know status, configuration, advanced, and about pages, and within those you can change configuration files and set up different properties of it, and turning on and off services like the URL snarfer, the DNS spoofer, and network grepping and things of that nature are really just kind of a click away. And on the status page, you just get a dynamically updating list of you know connected clients and, and what access points they think they're connected to, and the DHCP log, and the URL snarfer, and down here our network wrapper and our phishing log. So it's really just a concept of trying to make everything easier, moving the tools onto the device, and now it's super simple to basically uh, get started. Like for example, uh, internet connection sharing is, I just run in Linux a, a script where I answer a couple of questions like, what's my, you know, uh, the network, and um, you know, we've set it up on a 172.16.42.x, and then it'll ask you like, what's the interface between you and your pineapple, in my case ETH2, and what's your interface to the internet, and since I'm using a 3G dongle PPP0, and then I just kind of like hit answers for the rest of the questions, and it automatically sets up IP forwarding, and IP tables, and all of those things so that the internet just kind of passes through. And on Windows, it's just a few clicks as well, just saying, here's my internet connection, and here's my pineapple connection, and just kind of make the stuff work. Um, so that's really exciting. That's really kind of the fundamental change there. So I figure, you know, uh, why don't we do a little demo since the coffee shop is just next door? There are two things IT professionals and their clients have in common. They want the job done right and they want it done fast and that's why I highly recommend go to Assist Express by Citrix for anyone in IT. It's got the fastest, most reliable support. Go to Assist Express puts clients at ease with a simple, secure remote support and it puts you in a position to do what you do best. Access, diagnose and resolve the problem. With the fastest support experience and the ability to service multiple clients at once, you'll actually be increasing revenue while improving your customer service reputation. Take care of clients while they're away with the unattended support feature and get unlimited use for one flat fee. When it comes to remote support tools, I think GoToAssist Express is the best. So fast, so reliable, don't wait. Start using GoToAssist Express today. Hack5 viewers can try it free for 30 days. Go to gotoassist.com slash hak5. Again, that's go to assist.com slash hack5 for a free trial.